everybody. Welcome into the Jack Ramsey's Podcast. I'm your host, joined as always by Brandon Sprague, Danny Morang. <sighs> Sprague, it's a mailbag pod, but, big butt here, Danny Morang size butt. You missed, you missed the game against the Boston Celtics. I did. You know what? I, I said, I'm taking a night off for personal reasons. You picked a load a management day. night. It was load management. And I picked a better thing to watch. I went to the Van Gogh experience and I will tell you it's $50 a person. It is well worth it. I would contemplate going to it again. Oh, that good. I enjoyed it so much. Well, I love art and you know, Van Gogh's an interesting dude. And then you learn all this stuff about him and the way it's set up the experience. It was great. And I also saw a stat yesterday early in the day. And it was something like where Boston ranks statistically defensively. And then what they were have been offensively. And I laughed and I mm-hmm. said, Oh, they're going to murder Portland because they're 18th bad, offensively coming in. Every bad offense in this league feasts yeah. when they play the Portland Trailblazers. This is an awful matchup. So, I, I had it I had it wrong in last night's show. I said they hit 12 of their first 13. In fact, they hit 14 of their first 15. I thought they I thought they missed <laughs> another one in there before they missed a, before they missed the second one. So, my bad. They they actually sucked more. Um we got Chauncey in the post game now in two games in a row where in game one, it was, it's not me, it's you. And then last night you don't have heart and it's not my job to coach that. And I found it, I have found it very entertaining over the last 24 hours that these people who wanted a coach to hold people accountable, who wanted all of this, you need to call things out or getting mad at Chauncey for doing those exact things. Well, I don't know if it's, you should throw your players under the bus. Like y'all were mad that Terry was just like, Oh, we just missed some shots that he didn't publicly lambast people that he didn't get the proverbial shovel out and bury his guys. Well, now Chauncey's doing it. Mm-hmm. And now people, are, I don't know if you should do that with your starters. I don't know if you should do that with your players. And it's like, Hey guys, maybe we should have a real conversation about where the the faults are actually falling right now. And it probably doesn't have a whole lot to do with the coaching. Well, some of it, you know, for me, I, I have opinions on Chauncey. I don't know about strong, but I have a I have feelings and thoughts on Chauncey mm-hmm. Billups as a coach. That being said, I, I think it's a little telling in the sense of if you are sitting here with a lot of outrage or frustration towards Chauncey. I, I kind of am wondering how much you've been lying or fooling yourself <laughs> because we've told you this is a roster problem for over a year. So the fact that this roster, which came back, despite everybody thinking it wasn't, including the GM, by the way, who even in that weird postseason pressure. Former GM. With, former general manager. He, <laughs> he was very noncommittal on CJ in that thing. He didn't talk about trading CJ, but he also didn't talk about not, not trading CJ. Mm. And I think it led a lot of people to think he might make a move. Well, he didn't. And so I think a lot of people looking at just Chauncey here, let's just call it what it is. Like, this is also a huge, vast majority product of what the roster has been. And with that, it is a mailbag podcast, Senor Sprague. We got a lot, 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 lot of questions. And I'm just going to go through these in order. Um, just because there's so many, and grab as many as we can, and we'll go as rapid firely, rapid rapid fire as we can, not rapid firely. Good <laughs> rapidly <Lord>. firely. <sighs> <laughs> I'm broken. The settings ah, on me are not right. That, that, that's okay. Uh, it's your boy Ben Ben Cotterill. Uh, does it matter now who you get back for CJ, given the nature of the desperation of the situations right now? And I think this has been a question that's been ongoing for years. So, does it like? Getting value in return, has it reached the point for you where they need to make a move for the sake of making a move? Like, regardless, it just needs to happen. Well, here's the good thing. I, I think despite what CJ's been, what the team has been, I still think there's like there's a floor to this mm-hmm. where you're never going to get below certain talent coming back. Yeah. But it, do, it does swing pretty well, right? You can either maybe still get Ben Simmons, depending on how Philadelphia, Philadelphia views the whole situation from the East Coast. They could be viewing this now as, Dame is obtainable. Mm-hmm. We're going to hold our cards. But I also don't think you're going to get to a point where you're talking about two general role players and a first round pick. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I think there's a level to it. I'm not always in on the move to make a move, 
But with this team, I felt it in the summer and I feel it right now. There is at least a good enough move for you to go make a move. I had two NBA folks text me last night during the game, unprompted. Two agents. You know what they said? Both? CJ's checked out, huh? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so... Not, not that these guys don't know what they're talking about, but that they would go out of their way to text me. <laughs> hey, man, uh, pretty obvious, not giving a damn right now. Mm -hmm. That's the situation that I think the Trailblazers find themselves in. And that is a wild, wild place. Like, it is, it is not a... I mean, let, let, let's state it plainly. They got their ass kicked last night. And I, have you seen the, the final two minutes at all? The video from the Celtics clowning them? When Peyton was hitting the threes and they yes. were going crazy on the bench and yeah. It was bad. It was embarrassing. It was, I think every collective Portland media person said some version of this is unbelievable, mm -hmm. embarrassing, just un inexcusable. For, like just filling the timeline over like a 30 second period. And it has nothing to do with the Celtics. Somebody said that that Ime went to Chauncey and apologized for his young guys kind of going like a little off path, and I don't think he should have. I don't think you do either. I think if you're riding that wave, that's on Portland, man. I Portland should I'm have stopped one, that shit a long time ago in the game. I'm not one for the unwritten rules. There's a lot of circumstances that may be questionable, but like take example the Paul George dunk in the mm -hmm. playoffs. I don't. I'm not one that really gives a shit about that stuff. I don't think it dictates anything. I think if people are mad, they're more mad at themselves for playing like crap and seeing that at the end. And so when games like last night happen, I, I don't look at the other team. I look at the team that you're rooting for, that you're watching. Here in saying, the three and a half quarters before that. Look in the mirror. Look in the the, the GD mirror yeah. and, and question yourself. Don't question the Boston Celtics still shooting threes. Yeah. So, um, but they clowned him. They, 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 they embarrassed them on, on every level. Um, it's pretty clear at this point in time that, that, that three guys are going to be in the top of the list. And we'll talk about them more um, as far as who's mo most likely to be outgoing and not be a part of this team going forward. Uh, Helvey at hell to the half. Uh, any chance they make a move on a GM before they make a roster move? Okay. So cards on the table here. I talked about it in the post game show. Joe Cronin is in charge right now. When we heard the investigation was first coming around, I was told that Joe Cronin would be the interim if they moved away from Neil. We, you and I talked about this. What I don't know and what I have always been told is that Joe, if he was put in that position, would be a caretaker. That he wasn't a guy who was longing for the big chair. I don't know if that's changed. I don't know what the situation is. I know that Joe has been with the organization for a very long time and that he's a salary cap guy. Mm -hmm. I know that the Portland Trailblazers are going to get under the salary cap to avoid the luxury tax because they're sure as hell not paying extra money for this team. Good God. No. <laughs> this is the one time where I'm going to look at Jody and be like, well, they're kind of crappy, so. <laughs> if you want to skirt the luxury tax on this one, I don't blame you. <laughs> but could they make a move? Sure. Chad Buchanan was the interim GM who ultimately did the legwork and basically drafted Damian Lillard. So, um, but will they? Mm -hmm. Because they, they clearly care about money. Well, I, I think this. I'm going to throw it out there. On the GM versus trade thing front, mm -hmm. I'm going to assume you hire a general manager before you make a, a big move because okay. if you classify Nurk and CJ as trade pieces, to me, those are bigger moves. It doesn't mean those players equally carry the same amount of weight around the league, but those are pretty big moves for your organization because we've been billed as those are the three guys, plus now Norm is in the mm -hmm. mix. So I would imagine they go general manager before they allow Joe Cronin, who, no offense to Joe, if he's not going to be the guy – let him do the scouting, take the phone calls, compile all the information, and whoever they hire, you bring him in. I think we're also at a, a very interesting point here for the team. Dame's hurt. Ant's hurt. Nas has been banged up. CJ is checked out. Nurkic is a diva. Is it time that we maybe look in the mirror and be honest about this and say, let's take the Golden State approach? Clay's hurt. Steph gets banged Shut up. Shut it down for a year, huh? Uh, look. I don't think it's the dumbest suggestion. I know there's going to be people that don't like that. Like, I fight against it because of, of, Dame's, of Dame's prime. That's the only reason that I Golden fight. Golden State took a year off of Curry's. It sucks. But where is this team going? Is a trade right now in this season going to vault them to the top four in the West? It's not. They're going to lose in the first round, if not the play-in situation. You have a lottery-protected pick, right? Yeah. 
You willing to lose it? But just yeah, to be losing I, I, the first round again? I, I am in the sense of it, it, if it conveys, it conveys because you know then you can it opens up other things. But I'm not against that. In fact, I, 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 pu- I pushed that theory a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Like I was very much in the mindset of, listen, you, you've got a bunch of injuries. Pack it up. It's okay. Pack it up. for the, the, You're not in the prime yet. It's, it's okay. Now, because of the way the contracts stack up, I don't know if they can do that because they don't have the assets behind it. I guess that, that was the difference is the Warriors had those, those picks they had the their own picks. They had all of the assets behind it, and I think that that was the year that they got Wiseman, right? Yeah, they got the number two pick, and then they ended up getting yeah. two more lottery picks with Kaminga and Moody. With, like, right, right. Well, they they made the trades for that one. Yeah. Um, the the interesting thing I think for Portland is the all of these things have to be on the table. I don't think that these things are crazy. And if I'm not yeah. mistaken, Curry's two years older than Dame. This is exactly the age Curry was. Mm-hmm. When they basically told him, your hand broke, you're going to miss the whole season. And I bet you that sucked. He admitted as much. He hated watching. Oh, he hated basketball. watching it. He hated having to sit by. Yeah, I get it. But what's what's. But can they be bad enough to bottom out? And I don't think I think they've already won more games right now. It, it, they didn't lose by 76. Well, but I'm not talking about getting the number one pick here. If you, you have you, a, if you've you have got a, they, they can't just get a lottery pick, though. Like they're not a lottery pick away. Like while they need oh, the talent no. infusion, I'm not they, saying they that. need they need to, if they're going to do it, it needs to be a top three, top five at worst. Like they need to, they need to tank, tank. Well, this team is capable. <laughs> I want to agree bad, with man. you, but just because they have actual NBA players, I I think they're above that tier. Like the Pistons are bad. Pistons are there. The Rockets are there. The, the Thunder, Thunder are going to be there. The, the Magic. The Magic. Okay. Like, then you start to kind of go. Could they suck the- enough? The Kings, who have beat the Blazers twice. Look, I'm not saying it's the way mm. to go. I'm just saying it's a I, way. I'm not go. taking it off the table, but yeah, because they let me, let me put, in the, put, put this simply. Yeah, because Neil screwed around for so long. Excuse me, and delayed the inevitable and did make moves. Danny's getting emotional right now. I'm, I'm getting gas. <laughs> I'm getting. I'm getting bang. I'm getting bang in my gut right now. Uh, but because Neil screwed around for so long, yes. I do, and because Dame could be like, nah, I'm, I'm done. I'm not going to mm-hmm. do that. Here's the difference. Steph, Dre had capital. They had titles. They had MVPs. You're right. Player of the year. You Dame right. does not have that to fall back on. He has zero reason to trust anybody because they he trusted them for ten years and. They lied. Yep. That is my one pushback. Also, that's the thing. We know, Damon. Look, I'm playing counter to what I just And he's said. loyal as hell, but he's got to be sitting there after 10 years and go, nah, not, to, not yeah. this time. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, like, you want, Oh, you want me to sit out and we're going to bottom out and that's the best thing for us. Do you really know what the best thing for us is? Because you've been telling me for a decade you do, and I'm not seeing any evidence of it. I totally get it. It's probably not happening. The yeah. dude's too much of a competitor. But I'm is it on saying, the table? Yes. yes. I think it, I think. Every card should be on the table at this point. This is a, a definite mark in the road for the franchise. This I, team is not above any suggestion no. whatsoever. I can disagree with a lot of opinions. That doesn't mean they're above those opinions. Everything should be on the table. I, I, I completely agree. Uh, this from B. Wild at Brendan Dub. Has CJ's lack of performance so far this season all but shot down a chance to trade him for Ben Simmons? You and I kind of discussed this. I think if it's, if it's CJ and three first, you kind of know what you get from CJ and... Here's why I, I, I say this. Simmons was untouchable a month before the playoffs. Now he's on the market. Like, it's a change of scenery can do wonders for a player. That's that's all I'll say. And that's, that goes for both sides. I think if CJ's entirely checked out right now, if all of a sudden he's in a role where he's the primary ball handler with the 76ers playing pick and roll Joel Embiid, probably re- re-energizes him. Mm-hmm. So... I, I don't I, I think his value thing is interesting. I don't think it's changed in that way. Like I think it's Darryl, in the same box. Daryl's too much. Daryl's been in the game too long. I think if you watch yeah. basketball, you see this from time to time. Guys who the road is end with their team and you can kind of get the vibe, the energy, and then they go to a new place and they're rejuvenated. Yeah. And I think we're talking about two players. Chris Paul. Incidentally, 
Chris Paul is one of them, but two players coincidentally who are in the exact same situation. Ben Simmons is not even playing, mm-hmm. and CJ McCollum looks like he's is, not even playing. Is yeah, he's imitating somebody who's not even playing. So you could look at that and say we offer some first round picks. Yeah, I could I could still see Philly taking it, but Philly would probably be a little more uh, nervous about what CJ they're getting back. I assume they get a good CJ McCollum. Back. I do too. I don't think his performance as bad as it has been has been indicative of his trade value plummeting. It's not like you know daily stocks. Oh, he had a thirty point game, his stocks up. He had a fifteen point game, his stocks down. Like over eighty two games, CJ McCollum has shown who CJ McCollum is throughout his first nine years in the league. Um, mm-hmm. This from Clinton at AJC Guitar. What signs will we be looking for that that we are heading for a quote unquote blow up from the tension in this situation? Nurk seems pretty tense. A few others. It seems like the team doesn't have the same goal or something. Huh, Brandon? It's almost like a team full of guys that were been together for a really long time at one end, a bunch of new guys, and then you scatter some guys who are in contract years is a bad mix. Mm-hmm. Not great. Who, who saw this coming? Um, anybody that didn't have a close relationship with Neil. Mm. You have two starters in your sixth man in, car- in contract years. I mean, it's. It, I think it's fair. He's gone. It's. It's. We're pointing out the obvious. This was an embarrassing build of a roster. Yeah. This dude completely lost touch. I think by year three or four of his run, you could kind of see that this dude was not going to make the necessary move, nor was he going to make a move that really moved the needle because he kept selling us on, well, we got Al Farouk Aminu now. And we're going to put they, him They the profile as the fourth best net rating. Wins. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> drafted Zach Collins. Team. I mean, it's just, ah, it's. That's the thing is I said when he got fired, you know, enjoy this, don't look. But now we can look a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Because they just got raced by Boston by 30. Um, Back-to-back wins, by the way, of losing by 30 points at home. Just. Not bad. I mean, they they, realistically, they could have lost by 50 last night. Based on what I saw numbers-wise, I would agree. Like, Boston kind of went cold and sloppy for a little while, and and Portland hit a few shots, and it it was bad. But as far as like the situation blowing up, I said this on Twitter. I kind of hope there was a fight in the locker room. I don't think that this team's capable. Of I, I think they've. I, I don't I think, think they care enough. Cares. Yes. Yeah. They don't. They, and look, I'm not even throwing names to blame anybody. But I think even a guy like Larry Nance, who was, we talked about his role in this team, and that's what I don't even think he cares. Right. He's now. looking He's around the room, like, going, "Why would I even care? These dudes don't want to fight. What I'm going to fight them for? Yeah. I'll and I think that's this paycheck. And that's I'll get the hell out of here. A bigger problem. And that's why wholesale changes need to happen. This is, and, I, and I, we got to give credit to, to Gundy and, and Hyken on this. 2018 Cavs vibes. It's, it's, it's spot on. 2015, 16 Chicago Bulls. Like, it's just, it's run its course. It's got to go. Mm-hmm. You, you just blow it up from the inside. Take what you can and, and then see what happens. Uh, Hodgepodge. Uh, at Amar Greenberg asks, given how rough things have looked lately, what would constitute a salvage season? A couple moves and a competitive first-round exit almost seems like the ceiling at this point. Ouch. If you Ooh. fundamentally change the roster, and I, and I mean trade CJ, likely trade Nurk, for high-end, high-talent pieces like a Ben Simmons and mm-hmm. a Miles Turner or Mo Bamba or Thomas Bryant, like fundamentally change how the team operates and things don't go well, but you're like, Oh yeah, no, you can see like real signs because they just shot themselves in the foot for an entire month in December. I I'm not going to rail against it unless it just looks like complete ass. <laughs> and then C2. I'm going to go, eh, yeah. maybe you get a blow it up, blow it up. Well, I, yeah, we can get to the blow it up, blow it up thing. I, I can't believe how many Blazer fans I've seen on Twitter saying, I actually think they should trade Dame. Let him go get a ring somewhere. And I hate that attitude so much. I know. <laughs> it and drives me insane. Uh, uh, it's, it's very frustrating for me because you only get so many franchise players. Look at, insert all organizations that don't. Um, <laughs> Looks down that, south of the Kings. Salvage the season is interesting. To me, this is not about wins, losses, playoff appearances whatsoever. No. If you're going to salvage the season, you're going to make good trade. Yes, you're, you're basically setting plural. up for next year. Yes, that is what you're doing. If you make the playoffs, cool. You're going to get your ass kicked. If you make the playing game, cool, whatever. I don't really care all that much. This season, to me, in general, is basically dead from a win-loss perspective. Mm-hmm. I'm more looking at how guys develop, what Dame looks like when he comes back, 
And what are you doing with your trade pieces? If you make those necessary moves, maybe they could get into the playoffs, feel good. Maybe about get an upset. Building. Maybe get an upset. That's going a bit far, but maybe they do. But I don't that's know. what I'm saying. Like, kind of sucks. If, if all of a sudden you got more top end talent on your team, and it's a little bit of a, a, a wonky ride trying to integrate Ben, who hasn't played in a couple months, to get them on the same page with what Chauncey is trying to do. Yep. To get a bunch of guys who aren't familiar with each other playing together in cohesive basketball. It's going to be a chunky, chonky, weird fit. But mm -hmm. talent-wise, you have raised the ceiling. Fit-wise, you have raised the ceiling. Even if it doesn't fit perfectly because they aren't on the same page yet, overwhelming talent typically wins out. Yeah. And that's where... I, I want to remember, I think it was Dan Devine had a piece on this the other day, and I, I, I compared it to the Portland situation with the Suns. The Suns have been a shit show organizationally with the Robert Sarver stuff, just who the Suns have been, uh, Aiton not getting his contract, injuries, Chris Paul looking like a ghost of himself through the first month and a half, and yet they just won 18 straight games and beat the Warriors without Devin Booker mm -hmm. because they have overwhelming talent. The Blazers do not have overwhelming talent. And that is the, the, the difference. But if you added a, a Ben Simmons to this team, then you might have overwhelming talent. Yeah. And then you can start having discussions about what a successful season could look like or a salvage season. Yeah, I think mine is because I, I think if we play that game, I'm with you here, but if you play that game too closely, then you get disappointed. And for me, this team it. losing in the first round isn't going to disappoint me. No, it's more about building for 100 percent. I'm saying you could like your 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 mindset could be like if they got in if they got into the playoffs. It's like, not inconceivable. I'm with you there. No, and then that, that's what that's that's such a radical shift from where we are right now because right now they look like they're missing the playoffs. E right, they're on that track. They're going to probably lose Clippers tomorrow. CJ's banged up. They already released who's a uh, Nas is questionable. Aunt Dame obviously going to be out. Like, this isn't going well. They're already two games below 500. I'm just stating, like, that's what we've at least done on this pod is we've stayed consistent with telling you it looks bad, it isn't good, but if you make the right moves, it's a long season, and maybe those moves could come in and maybe it clicks a little faster than you think and gives you a little optimism to build on. Yeah, and I think that's that, that's kind of like the goal, which is kind of insane when you're talking about less than 25 games into a season. But You want to make Dame feel good. I mean, let's just be honest yes. here. He, he can be committed as much as he wants, but if this if this shit keeps going into the mountain... Which, I mean, every single game, it's, just, it's like compounding. I'm going to be prepared for the worst possible news and hope that it doesn't happen. That's yeah. where I'm going to go. You tr you're genuinely trying to salvage. like, And if you, t if you yeah. do make the moves, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Which is why so many people were hammering this this offseason. Make the bleeping move because if you don't, it is a bleak existence. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, bleak existence. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what we're seeing right now. Uh, by Neil, it's been real at Justin B. Leak. You speak of bad vibes. Remove CJ from the equation. Now, how are the vibes doing? They're worse. Nurks by himself. <laughs> It's awful. The vibes, I love there's it. three players. Uh, Rocco, uh, CJ, and Nurk. Get them out of there. The vibes are awful. They all want to be somewhere else. Make it happen. That was another thing that I, another NBA type text me last night was a lot of guys are just showing that they just they just want to be traded. Like they just want to go somewhere else. Which, yeah, it's pretty evident who those guys are. I mean, we know that they listen. We know that they read. We know that they search themselves. Like, if you've done that and you're one of those three guys, it's probably not great what you're hearing or reading. Oh, no, no. In the past, you could be like, oh, I hope those guys go somewhere new. And now they're like, get this bleep out of here. And that's yep. sometimes, for better or worse, that's what has to happen. Because a, a general manager or a president is going to sit there and go, well, I don't know. You know, they're well liked and ticket sales and jersey sales. And you can just fall back on that stuff. Now yeah. you, you, it's so a player can go. Nah, I I need to go, and right? I, and if I got to make this toxic, I'll make it make it toxic because it's better for me to get going. And that's the, to be honest, I I wish it didn't have to be like that. Organizations would 
be like, hey, listen, we'll try to shop you. Perfect example is Larry Nance Jr. Larry was like, I want to get out. I want to go to a better situation. <laughs> he ended up here. Poor guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's how it goes. Um, what do you think about the fact that this was the first time Chauncey talked to the team after the game? That's from Mika Kaken at Mika Kaken. Um, so Chauncey normally doesn't talk to the team immediately because of emotions, good, bad, or otherwise. Last night, that was not the case. And he addressed the team immediately, uh, considering their, uh, particularly about their, their heart. What is your, what is your take on that, Senor Sprague? I think he had a lot of eye rolls. I think he had a lot of, I don't really give a shit what you're saying right now. And maybe he didn't feel that way in the moment in that room, but I think their play say, says otherwise. I, it's all well and good to want to say something finally and address it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this roster is what it is. They are who they are. I don't think things like that matter for people. This isn't a movie. That's a Disney movie thing. Like I ripped into them and then they came back and fought harder. It's like, that's, that's not what you're dealing with here. That's something I, I always like, I, I get disappointed that people, I, I guess because they just don't have the exposure to it. That's not how it works. And that's the same thing with like this whole, like a coach is supposed to motivate. And it's like, Coaches don't go out there and give halftime speeches and pregame speeches 82 times in a, a year. It's not their like job. The, the, the timeout stuff that we get audio-wise on national televised games, do you know that the NBA and the teams actually get to edit what those audios yeah, you are? you never get anything other play. than the rah-rah. Right, because, and by the way, that's as rah-rah it gets. You ever look at the players when that stuff's, guys, you can do it, you're right there. They're always just sitting there drinking Gatorade. They don't give a shit. They just yeah. want to go play again. They're, they're looking at, okay, uh-huh, yeah. Yes. All right, yeah. let's go. Like, the only time you get real rah-rah are these very real instances that come across and they stick in your head. Such as, I want some nasty. Give me some nasty. You know why that sticks out? Because Pop's not a rah-rah guy. And he's begging his team in that moment to give him some nasty. Yeah. Because he shouldn't have to do that. And that's kind of the point. It's hilarious that we all have to kind of go point out Tristan Thompson basically saying the same thing the other night, which is, it's not a coach's job to motivate us. We are professionals. We don't need that shit. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, I was like, thank you. Thank you, God. Because that's that's the reality. These Assistant coaches, player personnel guys, those guys might rah-rah their their group of guys, the big man coach, or the, the player development coach may pull his young guard or young big man aside and go, hey, I need you to give him, you know, fingers to the chest during a timeout. That that kind of development for a guy who's 19, 20, 21 years old. Mm-hmm. 31-year-old Damian Lillard, nobody's going up to, a coach is not going up to Damian Lillard with knife hands and saying, I need you to lead these guys. Right, right. That's, like, that's not what happens. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, I get it. People want to believe in that because you want to have that, like that that Disney moment. But that's not how this this goes, right? So, I think tough thing for a lot of people, and I'll I'll put myself in this camp. I just I don't know. I know how bad the roster is. I'm I I have been Mister. You can't really tell who's a great coach when there's only so many pieces on a not so good team right like Popovich Mm. is a prime example he wins five titles dude heck he can't win post Kawhi. if that doesn't mean he lost the idea of what basketball is by any stretch but I don't blame people for also looking at Chauncey and not feeling great again it's it's the easiest thing to draw 100 percent well you know Kevin O'Connor made the video and it basically just highlighted everything we've been seeing and, and talking about, but you know, he got, a, he got a good amount of shares on social media. And I thought it was interesting that he was basically talking about how, well, the schemes are different, but they're not executing. And Harala Bob Valgaris, who worked in the NBA and bets on the NBA said, yeah. how am I to believe that we have true good schemes here? This dude, this team has gotten worse. It's the same roster. Now I think it's a, a carryover effect more than anything, but mm-hmm. I still think it's fair to point at and go, what is Chauncey great at? And we'll, we have to wait and see, I guess, on that one. We don't but really I think know. it's okay. For the most part, I think Chauncey's just been okay. And that's the thing. is, I, I think Terry was just okay. I think, I, I'm think i going to push back. I think Terry was better than him. I, well, here's the, here's the difference. Terry knew what he had, and he played into it, and we would get pissed, but he had to play into yes. it to have a chance. Chauncey is like... He's still very much in... 
his box, right? He's just right. Boom. He's, he's in a player right. box. Yes. Why can't you do this? I did this. Why can't you? The Michael That's Jordan. That's the Hall effect. of Fame thing I said. Yes. But there's also there's, there's another thing we got to remember here. Terry, in his previous three coaching head stops, or head coaching stops, excuse me, um, struggled. He didn't think he was going to get another one. Mm-hmm. He got that one after getting the title as, a, as the offensive coordinator, essentially, for the Mavericks. And they built an offense around LaMarcus Aldridge and then Damian Lillard. Mm-hmm. And he kind of tinkered with it and tried some things. And it was over the course of years that he developed this over nine years that things changed. And like, we tend to forget what it was like in the early going with Terry because expectations were low. Our expectations low with this team. That's the best team that's ever been around Damian Lillard in his prime years. No, which is why you don't bring in a goddamn first time coach. (laughs) That's, that's the, that's the crux of the entire thing. All along, is it you wanted somebody to hit the ground running, and you brought in somebody who's never been a head coach. You valued giving your friend a job more than caring about what was best for the team. I mean, ultimately, that is how it boils down. And I, Chauncey could end up being great, but he's still going to have to work through a million things. And yeah. that was always my biggest pushback. You mm-hmm. talk about how urgent you are and how important it is to do this, and then you hired a first-time coach. I can't take that seriously. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And I think the difference is between that and a guy like Ime is Ime spent nine years building up to it before getting that opportunity. Well, and also, too, oh, yeah, I mean, Ime, he really worked the bones of that situation of, of getting to that point. The other thing about Terry, though, is, and, and I don't want to make this like, oh, Terry versus Chauncey, but just on your point, I believe Terry made the playoffs in the Milwaukee and maybe got close in Atlanta, if not was an I think he seat. stumbled in in one of them, yeah. Yeah, one of the years. But but it, he at least had the experience. Mm-hmm. Like, there was at least in a resume to say, well, offensive guy for a title-winning team paired with George Carl, disciple, who was not the worst coach in the NBA when he coached. Mm-hmm. Okay, you can kind of sell it. Chauncey was a six-month assistant coach. That's it. That was it. And so – it's just um, this goes to the Neil stuff of it's what's frustrating today as we talk about this team now that Neil has gone. It's the fact that Neil even got the summer. The fact that Neil yes. got to dictate what this team was going to be. The Who next the coach is going to be. Years. And yes. more importantly, I think, and this goes under the radar a ton, that we had Sam as Fandiari on to talk about this. The assistant coaches. The assistant coaches for the Warriors have more collective head coaching experience than the, than the Blazers. Yes. Like it's it's disgusting what they have on their assistant coaching bench. The Blazers have Scott Brooks, who, well, I don't, Scott doesn't need to catch any strays right now. <laughs> I'll just say that. Uh, Andy Quanch at NBA underscore Quanch boy says, my questions are, would all of these be legal trades? And if so, would you do them? I haven't gone through and done the legality part of it, but I'm going to assume that the money is close. So, the crux of the bones of this is the Pistons end up with Ben Simmons and they send out Jeremy Grant and Kelly Olynyk, And then the 76ers get CJ a first and two firsts from Detroit. I don't think Detroit makes a ton of sense for Simmons because they've got Cade, who's kind of supposedly going to be in that kind of vein. And if I'm giving up CJ, I don't know if Olynyk's moving the needle. I like Jeremy Grant, but I think Jeremy Grant's your fourth best player. The Blazers need to find a second best player. That's that's that part of it I push back on. So I I, I would lean more towards Simmons there. Uh, the next part of it is for Miles Turner, Portland would give up Robert Covington, Greg Brown the third, Tony Snell, and two first round picks. I, I feel like Indiana could get better than that. Just from a player capital perspective, Greg Brown's an unknown. Snell's not going to be in the league all that much longer. It's basically Rocco and two firsts. Yeah. Which, I, Mm. You, I, yeah, I don't know if I like that. Here's the other thing. I don't think Portland should be sending out first-round picks no. for Turner. Not if for Miles Turner. If you're sending them out for Ben Simmons, you can justify that. Because here's – let's pull the thread back a little bit. If you did this deal, you would have essentially turned Trevor Ariza and four first-round picks into Miles Turner. Because it was – remember, it was Ariza and two firsts for Cuff. Oof. Oof. So now it would be Ariza and four firsts. Hmm for Turner 
I also do not like the Simmons thing at all. I don't know. I don't know why Detroit would want to do that. Why would you bring in a guy who can't shoot that needs to be ball dominant to create offense for a team that doesn't have any shooters? To, to for a team with no shooters, and then also to play for your with your number one pick who looks kind of like he needs to be ball dominant. Mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah, I don't understand that for Detroit. Uh, and then the back end of this is swapping out Ubre for Yusuf Nurkic, which. <laughs> Give me a ham sandwich and I'll make that. I trip. mean, a functional wing with size, like <laughs> yeah, I'd take it. I I don't know why Charlotte would sign up for a toxic big man who. Well, they need the they ball. need a big. I would you rather have guy off scrap heap big who's going to just fall in line and let the younger guys get the ball? They or would are you free bring up some in money here. They would free up well, some money here. So it's it's a viable big, and you free up money, so. Yeah, that's a tough thing. I, I just depends what Charlotte's cool with. I I could see why Charlotte would say no thanks to that. I that that dude is proving to be somewhat toxic, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, but I think again with markets like Charlotte, beggars can't be choosers. I think that it's 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 about talent, and if they can get talent in, it's the same thing with with Portland and taking on Ben Simmons. Like I Ben's, think the difference, yeah, Ben's toxic, no doubt. But I think I think the the well the high end of Ben will is the offset. To- put up with sure. tox, toxic, uh, toxicity toxicity of mm-hmm. it the Charlotte thing's interesting because I'm with you generally they're a, a Portland like team but you've got some nice young pieces that I, I wouldn't be the most surprised if Charlotte kind of became a, a low down little landing spot for some decent players sure I mean, there's worse finishing. places to be in the NBA right like would you rather be in OKC or would you rather be in Charlotte like I'd rather be North in Carolina's pretty dope any city in the in the NBA than Oklahoma City. <laughs> I I'm with you there. I, I don't awful. Like Minneapolis is miserable in the winter, but so sure. is OKC. So it's like Minneapolis yeah. has good food, good beer. They've got football. They've got a city that gives a shit. Like yeah. Oklahoma City get cares. The fans do, but I beyond uh, that, it's also you, Oklahoma. So if you've been there, you understand it. All right, uh, Varun Bos, uh, shout out Varun. Uh, friend of the show, just all around good dude. He is, I don't want to say obsessed because I think it's an unfair characterization, but very much likes a Mr. Carl Anthony Towns. Mm, who doesn't like a cat, huh? And he threw this one together. Yeah. Um, CJ McCollum, Robert Covington, Yusuf Nurkic, and Freddie Simons. For Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell. Uh, and well, Portland, I, Portland would also include picks in here. Uh, yeah, my first thought, I don't hate it. D'Angelo is not something I want. Um, if you could find a third team to take him, that would be great. Why would Minnesota want to do that trade? The only way this would happen is if Cat was leaning Asks. towards asking out. and Because he has three around, years left on that deal, right? And you build around Anthony Edwards. Yeah. Which... Ant and Ant, you, you'd have the ant, Ant's backcourt, Edwards and Simons. Uh, you'd drop the money off that you're owing D'Angelo Russell $30 million a year over the next two years uh, and pick up McCollum in that place. And then Cove, who former Timberwolves again, falling off. I just I don't think it's quite enough. I think if, if, if it's Cat. I think for Varun's point, like, it's not – you want Cat like you would do it, but you need Cat to sign up and say, I want to go play with Dame and I'm willing to live in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. If, if, if he's, if he Anthony Davis, this, then I could see this being how it kind of shakes out. Well, can Varun send him a, that's all folks t-shirt. Can we get this thing going? (laughs) (laughs) Cause I, I would love, I would, I would get so much energy and excitement from knowing Dame gets to play with Carl Anthony Towns. Cause he's actually given a damn about defense now, which is kind of interesting. Um, I think Cat's kind of in the unattainable t- unattainable sphere unless he forced his way out. And then even then, I think Portland's package isn't great. Yeah, but there was a highlight uh, a couple games ago where uh, Anthony Edwards had the ball at the wing mm. and he dribbled a little bit. And there's actually a clip and Cat's on the opposite wing and Cat just starts walking back because he's like, "We're not getting the nobody's getting the ball now. Anthony's going to shoot this." Mm-hmm. And he was right. They've slipped. They had a nice start to their season. They've slipped. Oh, now. they slipped down and, and win loss. Their their, their so, defensive metric is still decent, but at some point you do have to 
kind of wonder, I think, from Portland or many other teams, obviously, because they'd want him. At what point is he going to say, all right, it's not happening, and this feels like it's shifting towards Anthony's team. And, and I'm going like to I'm I'm KG valuing. myself out of here. Yeah. Actually, kind of a Lamarcus situation, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, Blazers Burner, at Blazer Burner, who would be your dream running mate for Dame? Attainable or not, just who in the league would compliment Dame the best? I'll let you take this one first. Any player in the NBA? Mm-hmm. Uh, Giannis. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the two-time NBA MVP, defensive player of the year. Most terrifying role man in the league with Damian Lillard in a pick and roll. Uh, you know. Seven feet with like a seven seven wingspan can take three dribbles the full length of a court. Great screen setter and roller, good passer, good vision, starting to shoot a little better. Like, yeah, I take that. The list for me is Giannis, healthy Zion, and Jokic. Zion. I mean monster screens and just get him the ball with one step. Okay. One step downhill. Has anybody stopped Zion with one step downhill yet? Um, only injuries and cholesterol. Yeah, that's it. That is it. Yeah. So, uh, and then Jokic. Just, everybody's like, oh, Jamal Murray, uh, Nikola Jokic, pick and rolls. It doesn't get any better than that. Well, I'll raise you the best pick and roll point guard in the NBA. <laughs> I say it gets better by two players. Like, yeah. Damon Steph with Jokic would be unbelievable. Like, it. Yeah. Jokic's so, passing with Steph's ability to move. Oh, to relocate would be unfair. And then Dame off the screen, like those are both better than Jamal Murray. I'm yeah, sorry. It's terrifying. Absolutely terrifying stuff. Um if you haven't heard your question asked during the pond, number one, we're running a little bit longer than we normally do on this, but there's a lot of them that kind of go over the top of each other. Okay. Um there was one other one I scrolled past it. Now I'm now I gotta scroll back to it. God dang it. Uh Philly originally offered Ben for CJ and three picks plus three pick swaps. So when the new GM calls to see what Philly wants now, what are they going to say? They might ask for one of your young assets. They might say, we're going to lose Maxi here. Well, maybe they won't. I don't know. I don't know where that stands with the Rich Paul stuff. Remember, he was tied in. Because yeah, I think, he, I think he's still okay there. Yeah, because if you're Philly, I, would, I don't want to lose Maxi. No, Maxi looks like he's going to be a player. He's good. Um, I think Philly would probably just have to figure out something, but they'd probably ask for Nas or Ant, and mm-hmm. I bet they, they'd probably ask for Ant. Which? Would you do it? <sighs> You're, this is kind of I more mean, your question. I mean, this that would kill me. That would kill me because he'd be, he, he would be behind CJ still. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. That would kill me. Like, if he's going to go somewhere, I want him yeah. to have opportunity. So, that's and, what I'd imagine, though. I could be wrong, but I would say that's the only difference in the trade is they might be looking at CJ and saying, oh, it's captain. I don't give a damn. Are you really going to give a damn over here? We're not sure. We're giving you our great asset. Please give us a young guy back. Yeah, it's just, that's a, that's a, that's a very, very, very tough one. Um, this is a mailbag question from Larry at TBPup22. Any idea why Rocco's production effort effectiveness has fallen so much this season? Who's? I'm sorry. Covington's. Rocco. You know, I, I think it's interesting. He had a really rough start when he came here last year. Mm-hmm. Like, I think in the first 20 games, people were basically he saying this was anything. a bust. Yeah, he, he was sub 30%. I think it's a combination. I think it's a slow start paired with another a a year of aging. You got to remember like this dude, he's been in the league a minute. And when he's played on different teams, he's asked to do a lot. Not every player gets to play 15 years clean physically. Like some guys have a shelf life to things. And I'm not saying Rocco's at the very end of his career by any stretch, but I think that's a little wear and tear another year older. And I also think there's stuff behind the scenes with this team in particular with Rocco that have been very frustrating for him maybe a little clashing going on Mm -hmm. and also he's the guy that unfortunately gets the shortest end of the stick on offense he never gets a look and then when they get on defense he has to help two or three other players because they don't give a damn and if he doesn't give a damn the damn will break and it already has so it's just like a combination of things is my best guess 
I would pretty much concur. I was the only thing I think I would add to that is that yeah. it's funny. Um, there were some folks last year that when Covington got here said that one of the issues with Stotts was that he wasn't holding players accountable, which makes me kind of laugh a little bit because now that Chauncey's holding guys accountable, we have heard from multiple sources that Covington is one of the guys that has um, not bought in. I think as a, as a simple way to put that, uh, I have seen multiple people say that, uh, I think Quick even had in his article, uh, that they're no longer really even communicating, they're just staring at each other. Uh, quick, quick went in. So um, it's no longer a, 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 a secret of any sorts. Uh, Brandon and I kind of danced around it because, again, we're not we're all reporters. We're not talking about that stuff. But we, there was there have been rumblings for for a month at least. <laughs> yeah. that, that was that was not a great situation. No, no, it's very similar to Seth Curry. That behind the scenes was yeah. ugly, and nobody really knew about it. It was like, why did publicly. Seth just like dip? And it was like uh, Neil didn't retain him. It was like, oh no, Seth wasn't coming back no matter what. Yeah, you think the big middle finger? <laughs> That's what you guys don't get. <laughs> <laughs> there was there. Listen, of, of all of Neil's failures, retaining Seth Curry was not one of them because Seth was like, "Nah, dog, I ain't coming back." No. Um, yeah. Speaking of more issues, Jesus Gomez, Gomez at Piano Master Zero Zero is part of Nurk's issue on defense that he's not being used in a way that maximizes him. I always thought the whole point of using drop scheme was that he's a big dude who moves well enough that he can play uh, if the perimeter defenders can provide just a little resistance. Continues on here. I think he felt like he was being left on an island and didn't like it looking like he, capital letters there, was getting beaten when it was the perimeter defenders who were breaking down. And the only difference now is that Billups has him running his 300-pound ass all over the floor getting tired. We know he can spiral when he feels he's being viewed blamed unfairly. And to be fair, he didn't get the offense running through him like he was promised. He is still getting blamed on the defensive end and I think put in a less ideal situation and is playing less minutes. So Hazard asks us a question here and gives a pretty good rationale behind it. I don't think there's a ton more beyond that except for I would say that yeah, I think part of Portland's problems are, is that they're taking their seven foot, three hundred pound dude away from the rim and asking him to guard away, which is something I we talked about last year when Terry was here. It's like, why don't they make Nurk more aggressive? He can do that. Well, sure. Then you're also putting yourself in rotation, and your low man that is tagging is six foot one, mm-hmm. which I think suboptimal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I I think it's a com. It, it, it's kind of like Rocco for me, and I, I I don't know if there's much more to add to what you just said. I. You know what you did with Rocco. I was, the one more thing I would add, the one caveat onto that is, I, I think it's clearly a guy that may may feel like he was a little misled of what his role with this team and this regime would be, and it's war on him that it's like, way hey, we need you to basically save our defense, and we need you to be this ultimate screen setter while not getting the amount of shots you maybe want. I, I think it's um. It's one of those combination things. And I think he's another guy that you point to, Rocco, CJ, maybe doesn't give a damn the way that he once did. And in that regard, we talked about this, I think it was last week. DeAndre Ayton didn't get paid after he sacrificed for the Phoenix Suns. Mm -hmm. He didn't get his touches. He concentrated on defense. He was the supreme role player. And the Suns got to the NBA Finals. And he was basically told, hey, you do this, you'll get paid. And then he didn't get paid. Who filled in for Yusuf Nurkic when Nurkic was recovering from a broken leg? Uh, Cantor. Also a son Whiteside. Oh, yeah. God, I'm sorry. I forget. No, no, it's no, Cantor, Whiteside, Cantor. Yeah, I'm no, sorry. no, no. I, I get you. Yeah. Um, did a son Whiteside get a massive contract and go to Miami based almost entirely <laughs> on points and rebounds? Yes, he did. GMs will still hand out contracts to those double-double machines. And for Yusuf Nurkic to get those Hassan Whiteside numbers, he needs the ball. And mm-hmm. we'll use the Boston game last night as an example. Nurk was the only one capable of scoring. Only. And he was cooking freedom. Freedom Freedom was, was, freedom was not free <laughs> last night. And Nurk was scoring on, on him at will. Mm-hmm. But on the flip side, they were getting killed. And it was, Nurk was justifiably upset on offense when CJ decided it's 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 my time. 
when Nurk was clearly cooking, but Nurk was also providing zero resistance on the other end, and Freedom was gobbling up rebounds. I think he finished with 9 and 15 in 22 minutes. For all of what Nurk was doing, he was giving every bit of it back because it became a little box score focused. Yeah. And I don't I don't necessarily blame him or anybody because the business part of the NBA is nasty. DeAndre Ayton got screwed. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Ownership screwed him. So if you're Nurk, you gotta be a little bit selfish in these in these instances. And that is the difficult path to walk. Yeah, I think that yeah, I, I I'm you're not wrong on Aiton. I think the the one thing to remember though is the dude's going to get paid. Somebody will, hopefully. Somebody's going but to get like he doesn't, doesn't have matter. the extension. Let's say he goes no, out he and doesn't. let's say he nurks his leg. He doesn't have that extension. I still he think he gets gotten. a good payday. I I do too. And your point is right. He should have gotten the payday. Especially after what he did. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll wrap on this one. Um because you and I, it's kind of funny. You and I talked about this before the podcast. It's kind of a framing. This is from Bebo at Pam Sears. Uh, what's the most realistic Roco trade? This one's tough. I don't, I don't know because I'm imagining you're probably packaging him. But if you're going solo, I, I got nothing. Maybe you got something because you, you may dive into this stuff a little more. I don't know what you get solo with Roco. You have to package him, right? I would think so. That or you're trying to gather more assets to add to a package of you sure. or CJ McCollum. Sure. And I think Kevin Pelton had this last week, and this is what kind of triggered that whole like big trade package that I did was that you, you would trade Covington to Sacramento for Marvin Bagley in a first as a means to take a flyer on a guy who's big, strong, long athletic, a, a draft lottery redraft guy, uh, hilariously a Neil Olshea special, but also recoup a first round pick. Yeah. And so like I think those are the kind of things that you're looking at of like what are you going to try and do because I don't think straight across like you can send Covington to two different teams. You can send him to a young team for assets that you add into another trade and they just either buy him out or let him ride out the season and becomes an uh, uh, unrestricted free agent and they get cap relief. Right. Or you're sending him to a veteran team who's trying to make a big time run and then you're taking their a different kind of asset pool. Mm-hmm. Then you're taking like like picks and young players. With the other team, you're maybe swapping out some veterans. Like right. they, they kind of work as a a, a middle a middleman uh swapping between teams to try to find fits. Like look at OKC as they've recycled guys through there and Chris Paul and Al Horford and gain more picks and flip them here. I think you're looking at those kind of situations when you're talking about Robert Covington. Because there's teams out there that would love to have him. There's no doubt in my mind. If he mm-hmm. went to a place where he felt like he was utilized better or just in a just a different place, I, I would I would assume and believe that he would look a lot better. Yeah. So I think those are the opportunities that you're looking at. As far as an exact trade, right now it's too early to know because I don't know who the GM is going to be pulling that trigger. Previously with Neil Olshea, Pretty easy to identify those things. So you said you said two weeks. You think when they announce this, right? Yeah, I think two weeks. It, it's it's either going to be two weeks or it's going to be the end of the season. I think it's going to happen at like an immediate. Oh. Or Joe Cronin's going to ride this thing out until the end so of the year. Joe, so Joe's got to have. I mean, he'll be empowered. It'll, I was it'll, say, it'll if be it's Joe the end of making. The year, Joe yeah. has to make a move. Yes. Either yeah. way, moves are going to be made. I would not be surprised if between December 15th and Christmas that a big time move is made with, with a starter. Regardless oh, of who I, it is. I'm I'm expecting that in 10 days they're on the phone saying, yes. What do you will you take this person? Yes, I, I am too. So uh and honestly, it doesn't necessarily have to happen after the 15th. It could happen before then. Yeah. But uh I think you and I are both in the same position now that we're like a move has to happen, right? And not like a, a a little move. Like a starter has to go. Multiple starters have to go. But I mean, to get the ball rolling, a starter has to go in the next like two weeks, three weeks. Yes. Yes. I, I, that's that's kind of, I figured you were there too. I think we will have an emergency pod or it'll just land on a perfect day where we'll be able to talk about this within two weeks. Shout out a wonderful off day. That would be fantastic. You know what's going to happen? A trade is going to happen when I'm on a plane. Oh, that's exactly what's that's gonna what's going to happen. happen. And I'm going to go. Well, uh, uh, I don't run the YouTube account. Uh, you know, what's, uh, see, I've got a, I've got a problem solved for this. I've got a remote login now, so I will be able to access the desktop from Hawaii. 
I went, I went and got a remote. Yeah, but you're going to land and you're like, well, I got to get another town. Then you're Ooh. really going to tell your wife, we're in Hawaii. I'm going to go do an emergency blazer podcast. You're like, well, the beach is so beautiful. We're going to catch a sunset. And you're like, let's do it tomorrow, Brandon. I'm going to go, absolutely. I think that's the good call. Speaking of good people calls. are going to tune into us, Danny. It's, okay. We have a lot of support. We've enjoyed this community. Um, look at that. You, know. you look like a professional teeing me up here. Brandon, I don't know if you know this, but I flipped the switch the other day. Memberships for the Jack Ramsey's podcast are active, and people actually took them. Let's go. They've That's used awesome. them. Yes. Uh, I, I continue to be completely and totally, wildly overwhelmed by the support. Um, let me see. Yeah. I'll, I'll share this with you, Brandon, after we get off, because you'll be okay. blown away. Okay. Um, memberships are active. The first watch party, unfortunately, it is not going to work with the Warriors, with Sam. So, okay. But we will do our own. So Wednesday night will be the debut for the watch party between the second and third quarters. Awesome. So uh, everything is set up and ready to go. For those of you that are already members, uh, which, thank you. Awesome. Appreciate you more than you know. Yeah. The... Uh, Community post will be up there for members only. Uh, if you are not a member, you will not be able to see the link. So if you want to, click and become a member. And that's just to control the flow of people into this app because we do have a limited amount of slots that we can use for this app while the app is in beta. Uh, once it goes full, we may do something or we may just keep this as kind of a member exclusive thing to kind of grow a tighter knit community. If you want to be a part of it, it won't have the cap, but that's again, that's for a different day. Uh, we'll also do some contests. I'm trying to to pool some swag together to uh, to make this uh, 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 an enjoyable experience for everybody. And the Discord is up. If you are a big time Discord user, I need a Discord support person. Please email me jackramseys at gmail.com. We can talk about uh, helping set some things up, setting some bots up. I am not entirely washed, but when it comes to Discord, I pretty much just click in and out. That's that's about it. Brandon, that's a uh, chat service. Okay, so I I. I knew that. Oh, did you know that one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Discord? Who? What, what's going on? Who's sewing Discord? <laughs> but again, thank you all for all of the questions. If you didn't hear yours answered, we will try to get as many as we, as we can into the next one. There was a ton. I think there was about 70 questions on this one. So um, thank you. Uh, we If we... Uh, if we get the opportunity for another trades, you know, I'll probably end up taking stuff in a bunch of these in the live show on Thursday. That's a good uh, idea. I think we need to start doing that on mailbag. The ones we don't get to we'll, because we, we'll, we value all load. of them. Yes. Yeah. It's just, yeah. we run like we're, we're an hour right now. So, uh, yeah. thank you all so, 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 so very much for all of your questions. <sighs> Neil Olshay has been removed from his job. And when you talk to right now, you and talked about this, about joy. Mm -hmm. The game sucked against the Celtics. It was unwatchable at times. But you know what? At the end of the game, at the end of the night, when I did the post-game show, you know what I didn't feel? Anger. Yep. Because that, that hope is still there. Like, for real change. Yeah. And I thought it was there this summer. I, I did. I was like, damn, that, that could be real change. I could finally do it. I am I am holding on to that hope right now. And I think it will sustain me through probably into the new year. Well, I, I'm going to let it sustain me going into next summer. Like I'm going to take it that far because here's the thing. We know this is kind of the last try with Dame mm -hmm. before he ultimately says, well, I'm 34. Or I'm going to turn 34. Now I, I can't do this. Thank you. I got to go win a ring. This is it. This is the time. And so for all the, people, this is the make like, or break period. You have a franchise player. He's been committed. Go out there and work your ass off to give it one more shot and maybe it gets good enough to just make you think the next, you know what I mean? Like start to think of it that way instead of this give up. So I'm it's no longer that. having to like look through a needle like, ah, well, maybe. No, it's, it's, a, it's a real chance. It's a real chance. You got your butt kicked and I'm I'm with you. I wasn't shocked to see that final score, um, but it feels good because you still know you got rid of the thing that ultimately dictates the future of this team. So if you're looking for your positive, there you go. Downer Danny is not, not a thing in that regard. It is, it is, there is hope. And if there's hope at the top, there, there's, there is, there's hope for the, for this iteration of the Blazers. So on that, we'll get out of here. Uh, you can find us on social media at Danny Morang, at Brandon Sprague, at Jack Ramsey's send questions to any of the handles or to the email address. We will work in as many as we can. We will be back on two, two Tuesday. No, 
to when's their next game? I now now I got a brain fart. Is it is it it's Monday, right? Clippers it's Monday? Clippers Monday, Warriors Wednesday. Yeah, okay. That's right. Yeah. God, I, I am go. just all twisted up right now. So tomorrow when this podcast drops and you're listening, <laughs> you have a game later tonight. We will have your pre and post game show. I will try to get somebody from the Clippers uh, on hand. It's, it, it's always difficult to find out who's traveling and who's not, but I will try to get somebody. Uh, and then we will have you for the Warriors game. We will have the watch party. I will drop more information for that on the YouTube channel. So if you're looking for the community posts, it'll, that's where I'll put it. Uh, we will have the live show on Thursday. So it's just boom, 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 boom. And then I will be out. I will be out Sunday to Sunday, 12th to the 19th. I will be in Hawaii. Uh, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll see where we go from there. But I, we will do a couple shows while I'm gone. Maybe a not couple. a couple. Probably two. Probably two. Look, this is me going to sound like lazy guy here, and I just missed the show. I am still one that advocates that you take a full week. We'll One see. show? Okay. Two? I think you're pressed. We'll see. We'll see. But you're a psycho, and nobody can ever talk you out of thinking something. Else. Yes, that's entirely true. So uh, on that note, uh, from one uh, psycho to another, appreciate you all because you're psychotic if you're still listening to this podcast, and we love you, and we appreciate you, and you're wonderful. We really do, yeah. Uh, take care. We'll catch you Monday night for the pre- and post-game show. Until then, take care. Talk soon. Bye. Bye.